Welcome back to the Rugby Connection podcast, the only fan podcast to get all the ins and outs of the rugby world. We're on our channel, we're on the Casual Bias Rugby channel. Speaking of which, the man's back again. Devin, how are you, mate? Oh, good. Good weekend of, of South African rugby, except for one absolute shambles of a team. Overall, what a weekend of rugby. Um, we, we spoke about it last week and said, listen, all the competitions feel so close. Everything has lived up to the hype. Um, I didn't even watch the premiership and we'll get into it. But wow, I was watching the school on the whole time. Obviously, we don't have the broadcasting rights, but yeah. everything just lived up to expectations. Like there's a yeah. couple of dead rubber games that no one cared about, but there were so many games to watch. You couldn't decide what channel to be on. So absolutely beautiful weekend of rugby. Just for, if you have notifications on your phone for like certain games, your phone would just be vibrating the whole day because it was that good. Anyway, yeah. let's just not waste any time. Quick note, Andy's not here again this week. He's actually on holiday. Joining up with the sun in Portugal, so hope you have a good one. Um, Yeah, straight into the URC. Oh, boy. A lot happened this weekend in the URC. Get the scores out of the way first, and then we'll dive straight into the games. Scarlet's getting a win over Zebra, 32-18. Monster beat Edinburgh, 29-26. Bulls beat Benetton, 56-35. Ospreys won the Welsh Derby against the Dragons. 26-13. Lions getting a big win over Glasgow Warriors, 44-21. Devon's beloved Stormers got a win against Connaught, 16 points to 12. Cardiff pulling off the shock, beating Sharks in the Shark Tank, 36 points to 14. And Ulster doing the double over Leinster, yet again, 23-21 at the Kingspan. Where do you, I know where I want to start, because I was there, and you text me. We, we, we have to start there. We have to start there. No one cares about Zebra Scarlets. Fair enough. Everyone yeah. pretty good Scarlets to win. Edinburgh. 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 What was the vibes? What was the vibes like there? You the said 8,000. That sounds like 30,000. I just heard 30,000 quiet people walking out of the stadium. <laughs> yeah, if it weren't quiet. <laughs> no, oh, the atmosphere was fantastic. Monster fans are allowed. They come packed. They bring a, a faithful group across. Sold out the I've never seen that many flags at an Edinburgh game. Nice sea of orange for a change. Beautiful, beautiful day for it. But ugh, the rugby, so much drama, so much controversy. Oh, and it, it's probably better speaking to you from it because you're a neutral. So you've seen it from both sides. I've seen it very one-sided. And I know mm. I wasn't happy with one major incident. So that when you look at the, how the score was going, that could have... Put it in Edinburgh's favour, but I'll put it to you first before I get my yeah. first thing. We'll get into the incidents in a second. I just want to say, like, I know I, I threw a little shot there at you at the start, but I thought Edinburgh played sensationally. I thought they were absolutely brilliant. The only issue was that Munster were more clinical. I felt mm. like I was watching Edinburgh dominate the game, but Munster somehow, some just scoring tries, kicking the penalty or whatever it was, keeping that scoreboard ticking. We mentioned it last weekend. They're playing some of the most clinical and mature rugby, and that's yep. exactly what they did. They didn't have their best performance. Um, was it due to them being bad or Edinburgh just being great? I think it's more towards Edinburgh just really pushing them, pushing that limit. And mm. and obviously, Munster that doesn't have that much to play for compared to, to Edinburgh in terms of having to fall out of the playoffs. But they still had a lot to play for, and and that's what good teams do. They they win the games when uh, their backs are against the wall. Uh, they yeah. just find a way to win. Um, but that takes nothing nothing away from Edinburgh. I feel like this game should have been a one point game. That's how, that's how it felt watching this game down to the wire. Brilliant game of rugby. You had literally something of everything. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. From I, I think I can I can put my neutral hat on and say. It was a good game of rugby, very entertaining. It's what you want. And we just we did say it last week that there is five, six teams in the world that know 
how to win when it matters, and Munster are one of those teams. Mm. But I'm not taking anything away from Munster. You play to the advantage, you play to the whistle, play with what's in front of you. I'm not one for blaming a referee or pointing out flaws in a, in a game. I love it. But I know you love it. I, Accountability. I you, love it. you love it. But I, I try and f- focus on the team. Well, like we dropped the ball there. We gave away a death penalty there. But oh, I couldn't get away from the referee decision this weekend. RJ Snyman being the big one. A yeah. very, very late hit on former monster teammate Ben Healy. And then because Bill Maher essentially came to the aid of Ben Healy, the penalty was reversed that Monster then scored from, which essentially then won them the game. But I don't know, there were just so many decisions in that game. Like for one, I so if you've ever been to I know you haven't, but if you've ever been to the high stadium where Edinburgh play. The players come through like a turnstile thing. It's not a proper tunnel. It's very good for fan engagement. You get a lot of pictures, you get a lot, meet a lot of players. Obviously, the officials come out first because the players are then shaking hands, talking, blah, blah, blah. They got booed. I didn't personally boo. I think that's disrespectful. The game's finished. Mm. Deal with it in your own space. They're walking to go to the change rooms to get changed and go home. And there's people just booing. I almost felt like a football match. It felt really uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I don't mind it either way. You can give it to players. That's what they signed up for, becoming a rugby player, being mm-hmm. being involved with fans and stuff. On the other side, I, I'm like, why are you booing the players? It's not really like Munster did anything. They didn't make the calls. No, no, like, I know. That's the... like, they just played the rugby game, right? That's it. And Yes, maybe it was a bit of a late heat, right? But I watched it from home with the different angles and stuff. And I'm not saying this because Erges Neyman is South African at all, right? I, I do love Erges Neyman. But it wasn't that late of a heat to warrant a penalty. Like, he was kind of already committed to the tackle, but he knew what he was doing. You get what I mean? Like, he yeah. could have pulled out and maybe just knocked him, but he went for the tackle because that's just rugby, like mm-hmm. I'm, I don't like it that, that this conversation comes up where it's like has the sport gone soft because no. that's just a big hit. Like he didn't go out and smash him on his neck or whatever. Ben Ely retaliates a bit trying to jiu-jitsu him off, and obviously he's not going to get that right. But it's not like Erges Naman's laying on him, pushing his head into the ground. There, he only reacts again after Ben Ely tries to kick himself out of it, and that is why I I actually agree with the decision that. Um, who was the guy diving in? Volmera. Belmar came in to save Ben Hewitt. Yeah, like, I wouldn't, maybe agree is the wrong decision, but I could see how they got to that decision. Obviously, mm. what hurts the most is that Munster went on to score from that. Like, if Munster didn't go on to score from that, then you probably you don't care about it too much or whatever. But it's yeah. because it scored after you guys just cleared the ball. Um, so I can understand our Edinburgh fan. He's annoyed with it, but I also, in my mind, think I can't see that it's the wrong decision, mate. Not necessarily the right one. I know that's. I know, I know, I kind of get what you're saying, but it wasn't even just that decision. Obviously, that stung a lot just because of how quick, like, so penalty monster, tap and go, try. That's that mm-hmm. obviously hurts. But yeah. when we were at the other end, when Connor Murray got yellow carded, we're on the try line. How is that not a penalty try? That's what I didn't get. Because you could see the referee looking at it. And also, that's another thing that was a big issue in this game. Take the time to make the decision was ridiculous. Mm. I understand you have to see from all angles and listen to the TMO, get his opinion, blah, blah, blah. But see when it takes five, six, seven, eight minutes to make a decision and then restart the well, essentially start the clock again. We're all bit, we're all angry at this point. We're all fed up of it. Breaks, it breaks momentum as well. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. We're the seeing it. Like it didn't look to me like they were looking at a penalty try even because there was there was a bunch of monster defenders. Now I never saw a wide angle of it, so I don't know how wide Edinburgh was, but there was at least two monster defenders on the line. So if they were to go for a pop pass, you could never give that a penalty try because there is defenders in front of them. Now, if if you want to make the argument that he was going to throw that ball out wide and there was a player there, no monster defense, 
Fair enough, right? But I didn't see any of those angles. Now, I'm not sure if we get the same broadcast as you guys, but it didn't even look like they were going for a penalty try. They were disputing kind of just should it be a yellow or not, which it should have been, and that's why they got the yellow. And in the end, you still got the try, which shouldn't have been a try, by the way. Not that at was, all. That was, that was our one. From, so Conor Murray gets yellow carded, so we go for the scrum because there's a less ma- a lesser man on the outside. That makes sense. That's just good tactics. Every team does that. Yep. Yep. We are driving Munster on the back foot, solid. And you're waiting for the referee to go like this, with the advantage. Nothing happens. And he goes, you are coming up together. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. And I'm trying not to be biased. That's your job. That's in your name. But... Um, I was trying not to be biased, but like yeah. three, four scrum resets, we're doing it every time, and we're getting nothing out of it. I'm like, what is going? Like, yeah. how is this happening? Yeah, like you, you guys had the at the dominance at the start of the scrum, and then obviously with the dominance, naturally they'll pop up, uh-huh. and it felt like the rift just decided that the he's going to call it for for standing up. Now I'm I'm heavy against uh, scrum resets. Uh-huh. Like I do not like it at all. I think it wastes a bunch of time. I, I I spoke about it when the Stormers played the Dragons, like eleven scrum resets. That was something ridiculous. So yeah, uh, that one I agree on. Like the the scrums weren't refed well whatsoever. Um, but then obviously, it all kind of gets nullified with the fact that you guys did go on and score anyway. Like I know, I know and I know that's caused some and and even and even and and. and just the fact that it was a very controversial call, because I am fixed on that is never a try. It kind of equals it out a bit, right? Because now now you've got the, the TMO decision on your side. Because the TMO is like, stop, there is the ball. I see it. It's on the ground. And it's the guy's wrist, his wristband that you see. And I'm like, like I'm watching the game with my dad. And I'm like, this, ref, this TMO said pause there, right? Yeah. We pause the TV. And it's like, where is this guy seeing the fucking ball? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know what he, what he's doing. So I, ne- I never went. I've never went back to see it. I think just because of all the, either way, all the messing about, all the refing decisions. I don't want to go back to watch it. And I even said to you and Andy on the Saturday. Being there, the emotions are high, regardless of the opponent. Your emotions run higher. But once I came away from it, even when I was on the tram back to my car, I was like. You know what? We just edged the defending champions and took a point away yeah. from it. Yeah. As I said, you can all your head eye with that game. Mm-hmm. It was a brilliant performance. You still got at least a point out of it. We spoke that you guys needed at least a point from this game. And yep. if you could potentially get an upset victory, that would be massive. But yep. a point is a bonus. That that's kind of what you when when it, things are so tough, try and get as much points as you possibly can from something. Um, I do believe you at least deserve two points. Get a get get the fourth try, but obviously it's tough to score four tries against Munster. But I wouldn't let this this game really affect your 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 mindset too much. I think it was an absolutely scintillating scintillating game, scintillating scintillating performance from you guys, and I think you take away more motivation from this game than you had necessarily coming into it. I think this is a a great stepping stone and building blocks for you guys for the rest of the tournament. Because now all of a sudden you've put people on notice saying, listen, don't write off Edinburgh. We are a good team. We know how to play rugby. And I fully understand your reaction to to some of those calls because that was my reaction as well. Just like I would understand some Munster fans that feel a bit yeah, of um, agreed with, with some decisions. Uh, it wasn't refed well that game. And no. I, I know people say South Africans love to blame the ref, but... And and yeah, to some degree, well, not to some degree, it's true, right? Oh, yeah, you but, are but you also have to realize it's it's coming from a place in South Africans where it's like we need to hold ref, refs accountable. Yes, we we have been smacked a couple of times by big decisions that really go against us. We we hardly see tight decisions f- fall for us. Now that's very biased from from my point of view, but it's about mm-hmm. accountability. And I would love for refs to have accountability, have them talk in press conferences or whatever, because that is at least what the fans and the players deserve when it's like, what did you think while you made this call? Because we can all see it. You have your TMO and your replays, but yet that's not the right call. 
That's yeah. just my opinion on it. That's that's a fair one. And the thing is, you're never going to get the right answer. doesn't matter who you yeah. speak to. There's no, yep. You're always going to have someone disagree with you regardless. But anyway, Monster get the win, top of the table. Well done. See you next time. It was a good game. It was always a good battle between us. Anyway, moving on to the Saturday. Whoa, where do we start? I know where I wanted to go because we were praising their never say die league leader mentality last week. <laughs> Fell on his arse. Glasgow Warriors. Yeah. What the hell? 53 minutes on the clock. It was 14 points to eight to the Warriors. Lions were a man down with a red card. 65 minutes in? 36-14 to the Lions. What yeah. is going on? How? What happened? Lions Nothing with 14 men are a different breed. They, they did it against Connacht as well. They were a bit on the ropes against Connacht. Got a man sent off. I think it was... Oh, who's the prop? Oh, I completely forgot. The big guy. That guy. I can't say his name. Yeah. I can't pronounce his name. I know what you're on about. Yeah, I completely forgot now. My apologies. But anyway, that that never say die mentality that we spoke about for Glasgow just completely went away and went into the into the Lions. Like the way that they played when um Noamba came on, total, total difference maker. Absolute and it's somewhat it's not just I know they did score an interception try, right? But it's not yeah. just interception tries. It was beautiful rugby. Look Very at that rugby. try that JC Pretoria scored. JC Pretoria's future Springbok. I'm telling you now, Quaha Smith vibes from that guy. He's a monster, okay? It was just absolutely brilliant. And you could see the passion that there was in the in the Lions atmosphere or the, the Lions camp. I know the stadium looked empty. There was still a, a couple of thousand. Yeah. I think they probably filled the, the hive. Because, as I told you, they just show the one side of the stands. They only book the one side or sell tickets for the one side of the stand, which is un underneath the camera, so you can't see it. But you could just see what it meant to the Lions. They knew how much they still have to play for. And they, they've they really given themselves a shot. And that performance gives them confidence going into this final weekend against the Stormers. Brilliant performance. Absolutely scintillating. Absolutely. It was great. I, I don't even know where it went wrong for Glasgow. Was it just complacency? Is that no, I just I just think they they went up against the team they were hungrier they they just wanted it more it's well, not that well. Glasgow played ba played badly it's Glasgow on the front foot um attacking running from let's say 60 meters out gets into the 22 the ball gets ripped boom counter attack they just slaughtered them on the counter like it was insane it happens you get games like that yeah yeah uh, so I think, do you want to talk about the Stormers game? Go, I'll just you... say something quickly about it. Sure. Um, I don't think it's as bad as people might think. Once All again, right. not not clinical enough. I would agree. Mm -hmm. Um, a bunch of unforced errors, but overall, our defense was good. Five meters mm -hmm. out, defense looked solid. It didn't look like Connor would score too many points. We had so much possession. Uh, the running rugby looked a bit better. It was every time that final pass, the final offload or whatever that we made a mistake, once again, line outs five meters out, scrum five meters out, unforced error. And that's going to cost us in the big games. I can tell you now, it's going to cost us in the big games if we don't sort it out immediately. But overall, Marnie Lebox kicking was good. Damien Willems looked like a million bucks once again. Dan Duplessis always carries that ball hard. Um, Ivan Rus once again wow how many times do you want to talk about this guy um, good to see Franz Malherbe as always there um, doing his doing his thing there at the scrum so not as bad as everyone would maybe think when you look at the scoreline Connacht yeah. at home easy team that you can slip up against if you're not used to that artificial grass that type of weather uh, the atmosphere was wild so I'm just happy our boys did it and, yeah. and we move on there you go Ulster versus Leinster. The ball yeah. on John Cooney to think, you know what? I'm going to nudge this. Just shy of halfway, just over a minute left on the clock, and it just kept going. It just floated through. Beautiful. Jacob Stockdale rolling back the years. Beautiful interception. Nobody was catching him. Great. Mm. Leinster can't get top two now. That's something I never thought I'd say this season. They can't, they generally can't get top two. It's it's crazy. Why would they not be able to get top two? 
Everyone's been saying that that they can't they can't finish in the top two. They're just one point behind the Bulls and three points behind Munster. I don't know. Well, people depends are... who everyone's playing. Bulls not Bulls aren't losing to the Sharks and Munster versus Ulster. Good slip yeah. up. It could be you a slip up. Know. But uh, Munster, uh, so. yeah, I mean, you looked. You, I looked at that first ten minutes. And I was mm-hmm. like, this is Ulster dominant. This gave yeah. me the same vibes as Edinburgh's start against Munster. That's how it felt. Yeah. Um, they just looked so hungry. They knew what it meant to them. And it felt like Leinster just couldn't, couldn't keep up with it. And and Ulster deserved winners at the end. That That's all I can say. Like, is, is Ulster Leinster's bogey team? They've yeah. lost to them twice this season. I think they lost twice last season to them as well. I'm sure I've heard oh, something. Oh, my word. They, they just seem to... It's almost like for years of battering Ulster, they go... Ah, it's fine, lads. It's only all stuff. If things stay as it is right now, they'll meet each other in the quarters. Ah, but it'll be in Dublin. It won't be in Belfast. Yeah, well, I'll still beat them there. True, shit, yeah. <laughs> we just we literally just said that as well. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it to stay where how it is because I know where we, we where we have to go. And I don't want to go there. Oh, well... <laughs> There's no place in knockout rugby I want to go less than fucking Loftus. Yeah. No. Anyone but anyone but Bulls at Loftus and knockout rugby. No, thank you. Yeah. Don't, don't let that happen. Anyway. Just win, your, just win your next game, I guess. Well, next game's crucial because it's seven versus eight. Our final game is Benetton. Oh, shit. Wow. And because Benetton got beat by the Bulls and Lions beat Glasgow, Lions are now on level on points. Yeah, and and Benetton's at home. We know they they I'm... like they <laughs> like playing at home. They have, they've got a good record at home. They have, but I need to. We need to be confident. We need to go full heart on our sleeve. Yeah. Back yourself. Back your what? See the cap- when you're so capable and you're actually back the ability. Go for it. Just go for it. Go nuts. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But we've got a few more weeks before the final round. The final, however, we did come to a close of the regular season in the Premiership and, ah, oh, did not disappoint. All games on the Saturday all kicked off at five past three. I'm going to quickly run over the scores and then the implications and then we'll talk about Quickly, who did you watch? I watched the XR game more because I was an XR fan and I needed yeah. the job done. But once I kind of bye accepted bye. the game, once I kind of accepted we buggered it, I switched over to Queen's Bristol. So okay. But so quickly, Bath running riot at the wreck against Northampton Saints, 43 points to 12. Gloucester were the pantomime villains this weekend as they put a hurting on Newcastle Falcons, 54 points to 14, meaning the Newcastle Falcons have won zero games out of 18. They have not won a single game this season in the Premiership. It hurts. It's sad to see. Nobody likes to see it. Sort it out. Tigers beating Exeter Chiefs. All we had to do there was go and win. But you know what? For a team that's been struggling for the most part of the season, hasn't felt like Leicester Tigers of what they can do, this has been their best performance. I will say that. 40 points to 22 for the Tigers. Quickham Stoop, Harlequins, Bristol Bears. We thought Quins were going to run away with it. Grumble by. Bears ran away with it. 53-28. Unreal, but we'll go into it in a bit. And then, finally, Stone X, Saracens versus the Sail Sharks. Sail Bold Sharks. First time, nine, first time in nine years they beat Saracens away from home. 20 points. And, and you did... Fair play to you, Devin. You did call her, but I don't even... I, I mean, we need to start with the Quinn-Bristol game because this was nuts. Yeah. I, obviously, as, as I've mentioned, like we don't get the broadcast for it. I was yeah. trying to see the game, couldn't watch it, but I was watching the live scores of everything. Like I just had, had Google open, watching all the scores, right? And I yeah. saw it was so close. It was like 7-0 to Bristol, 7-7, 14-7 to Bristol, 14-14, right? 
And then I think Bristol scored twice to make it 28-14. Harlequin, uh-huh. or 26-14. Harlequin comes back, takes the lead, 28-26. I'm like, wow, we've got a game here. I'm not a gambling man. I am a gambling man, actually. And I put money on Harlequins. I was like, okay, they've, they've, <laughs> they've, they've got their momentum now. I'm going to yep. go out, have some beers, go out with friends. Come back. I looked at my photo, I was like, 53-28. <laughs> what the hell has just happened? And you like, know what hurts about that more? And I actually feel sorry for the Bristol Bears faithful. Putting 50 on Quinn's, so your job was done. But because Sale did the job on Saracens, it still wasn't enough to get into the semi-finals. Do you know how nuts that is? To be a team, yeah. 50 on a Champions Cup semi-finals team on their home turf and still not advance. Yeah. That, that sucks. But, oh, what, what a weekend it was. So, semi-finalists are as follows. First place, Northampton Saints. They've been flying all season. They're at home, Franklin's Gardens, against fourth place Saracens. That's how tight this this league was. That, that's what makes this victory for, for Sale so good. Because they even pipped Harlequins with it yeah. as well. Moved into yeah. third. Brutal. Brutal. But we love it. That's what we lo- This is what we love about the sport. Must yeah. watch games. Every game matters. And then you've got second place Bath because they climbed up that table massively. Beating the Saints. Like I said, they host Sale Sharks. Oh, money. Both games. Can't wait. Yeah. Would would I'll, you say Bath might be the favourites at the moment? Oh, it's it's so weird, right? Because I've I've been looking at it thinking for most part of the season, like Saints are in cruise control, Saints are after some silverware, they're ready for it. I think they've actually been at the top of the table like all season apart from like one week or something. And but when you look at the table, Bath are on the same amount of points. Bath have just quietly been doing their thing. Finn Russell, Ollie yeah. Warren, Thomas to tight eleven tries. He's a tight head. What is happening? Yeah, Thomas the tank. Yeah, Bring, <laughs> Springbok, getting back in the squad. I think he should get back in the squad. 100%. Yeah, well, especially especially if the likes of Stephen Kitsoff stays injured, right? So that means the spots are open for him. So you never know. I forgot you do it like differently, don't you? You do like your tight heads actually, your loose head and your blind side no. flank, your open side flank. Do you not do that? Yeah, just just our, just our flankers switch around. Because yeah, see yeah. when I did, sorry, just a little like side note. See when I do like here's my Springboks team to take on whoever, and I have like see Khaleesi six, PSF to toy seven. People are like it's actually the other way about. I was like, yeah, but it's not. It's not. See, Ecclesi, where's the number six? That's it. Yeah. That's how I'm operating on. Anyway, unreal. We're going to get great semi-finalists. I feel so sorry for Newcastle Falcons. I really do. 18 defeats. Yeah. Zero wins. That's, that's, that's bad. That's bad for the sport, right? Like no one, no one likes to see that. And just the fact that they've lost them all kind of makes you desperately want them to have gotten that victory over Leicester Tigers, that game that went to like 150 minutes. Yeah. Like that's it feels like that's just rubbing salt into the wound at the moment. Um but overall for someone that hasn't watched the Prem really, mm-hmm. I've like kept a close eye on it, even though yeah. I haven't physically watched it. Like it's just been so entertaining. I love the fact that you have rugby competitions being this close. Uh, it gets fans more engaged. You don't know what to expect. Edge of your yeah. seat stuff. That is what we love about the World Cup. And now to get it in franchise rugby as well. well Brilliant. No, no one loves it. No one likes it when when one team just like completely runs away with it. No, like I look know. at the URC. People thought Leinster will obviously just run away with it during the um, during the league stage. But sitting in fourth or third. Yeah. Sitting in third. Like... They might not even get the home playoff game once again. That might cost them again. Wild. Imagine they have to play against the Bulls in the final at Loftus. Makes it so much harder. The Bulls have to survive Edinburgh first. Yeah, light work. Not you. I was trying to help. <laughs> but yeah. oh, it's, I'm going to stick with the Prem just because I got announced today, as we, as of today, so we're recording on Monday evening. But mm. this afternoon... Premiership Rugby unveiled the four nominees for Player of the Season in the Prem. I'll 
rattle them off to you and I'll let you pick. Because I think whoever wins, very deserving, just based off the seasons they've had. So, from Northampton Saints, Courtney Laws and Finn Smith. From Bath, the Maverick, Finn Russell, and Exeter Chiefs, Henry Slade. I was Thomas to win all day. I don't know, take up with Prem Rugby. That's the nominees. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, I wouldn't have given it to, to Thomas the Toy, but for a prop to score 11 tries, most props you're don't have 11 you're, you're in their career. The It'll be in team of the season, don't worry. Yeah, but like, for, props don't even get 11 tries in <laughs> oh, their no, career. Got in a season, yeah. Yeah, okay, but I'm going Courtney Laws. I think he's had Laws, his best yeah. season of rugby. He's had mm. this season. Uh, we spoke about it with Aaron Smith as well. Like some for some reason, when guys say I'm going to retire, they play t- ten times better. Okay. It's like they feel no pressure. They just go out to have some fun. They play yeah. some hard rugby, and yeah. and just go and go out and ball. And that's what he's deserved. It. He's been scintillating this whole season. See, I'm I'm torn because like genuinely, whoever wins, I'll be like, you know what? Fair enough. Very deserving, and because they've all done stuff their own way and earned the right to be nominated, but I'm very torn, because as an extra Chiefs fan, I kind of want Henry Slade to win it. Top point scorer in the league, his redemption story this year, he wasn't in the England World Cup squad, he's played that well, he's now in the England team, he's re-signed a new deal with XR. As a Scotsman, I kind of want Finn Russell to do it, because when Finn Russell announced he was signing for Bath, everyone was like, why? Bath are rubbish. Bath are a historical team that win titles or are in finals and they slipped off massively in the last few years. And Finn Russell, not by himself, it has been with the coaching and the style of play, blah, blah, blah. But Finn Russell has skyrocketed them back to where they should be and Mm. was in the top two or three uh, point scorers as well for the league. And he missed some weeks out due to injury. So, fair to him. Courtney Laws, like you said, his last dance. He wants to win the silverware with his boyhood club. Not against it. He's been yeah. a proper enforcer, playing some of his best rugby of his career, like you've said. But then there's Finn Smith, who's been pulling the strings for that Northampton Saints team. And he's only 21 years old. Like, he's just, he's not even hit his peak yet. Mm. He's played like he has done this 15 years at the top. And it's his like second, se- first full season at Northampton Saints, third professional season overall, I think. Because I think. He was a, he was with Worcester Warriors. Saints snapped him up when Warriors were on the verge of going into administration. So he was going to be Dan Beggar's understudy. Great, fantastic for a young man to play under one of the best Northern Hemisphere tens in the last 10, 15 years. He played that well. Dan Beggar left for Tolan early. <laughs> mm. So there you go. That's how good Finn Smith is. Yeah. I can't. I can't decide. I really can't. I'll decide for you. You choose Thomas the Toy. Let's go to <laughs> Super Rugby. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll get to Super Rugby. Which can I just say? Right, they've already just, they've already shown who is hosting the four quarterfinals mm-hmm. because of the points. I don't like the fact that a twelve-team league has eight teams advance. Don't do that. That's a joke. Yeah. Just do what the Premiership does. Have the top four teams. You have one ver- uh, first versus fourth, second versus third. Great semi-finals and an even better grand final. That's how it should yeah. be done. But we'll get into the scores. Yeah, the, the fact that, for instance, the Drua or Highlanders are currently in the top eight yeah. after winning less than half their games. You only need to beat four teams to get a playoff. Just what? like that, that's a joke. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. When four games during the playoffs. Yeah, I fully I fully agree with you. Just make it the same as the Prem. Like, yep. seriously. I understand. People will probably be like, why is it, so why is it okay for the URC? Very simple. The URC is a bigger league. Yeah, it's, it's more competitive as well. More Look at how close it is. From from 5 till 11th yeah. or 4 <laughs> points out of each other. That's one win. One win, yeah. But, Literally, um, the Drua, for instance, who's in eighth, and the Blues, <laughs> they need to get nearly 10 wins 
I'm actually going to give credit. I'm actually going to give credit to a different podcast. Not your one. Sorry. Um, the rugby booth or the sports booth. I can't remember if they've changed to just rugby, but they were on about like how close it is in the Premiership, how close it is in the URC, like the points difference, and like how like eight teams in the URC are on plus on points differential. Mm. There's like two teams. Oh, two I teams. saw this. Yeah. Yeah, and Super Rugby, there's only like two teams on plus. Everyone yeah, else is like negative. Look at the Rebels, who's in sixth. He's on minus yeah. 90 points difference. How are, you, exactly, how are you on 90? Minus listen, 90 points. The people who actually care about the Super Rugby part that we're talking about, we're only talking about it because we love the Super Rugby. I, I thoroughly love, I love the it. Super Rugby. As, as a South African, I grew up watching Super Rugby. Like especially because I'm I'm still I'm still young as well. So I just grew up in an era where we played Super Rugby. Yeah. We played against the likes of the Chiefs, the Crusaders, um, the Reds, the Brahmis, and everything. That was back when the Western Force was still thriving. Um, and and it's kind of sad to see a bit of the lower end. Like I think the top part is amazing yeah, rugby. Yeah, the top end. Blues, the Hurricanes, yeah. Chiefs, even the Brahmis. Um, yeah. To some okay. degree, the Reds. Outstanding rugby, but it's like the gap between the top and the bottom. Too big. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's too big right now. But yeah. we've still got rugby. So Kane's narrowly beaten Moana Pacifica. It was closer than we think. 32 24. Rebels, again, very close on home soil against the Chiefs. 26 23 win for the Chiefs. Drua in Fiji. They do what they do. Getting a famous win over the Reds, 28 points 19. Barumbies, controversially, we'll get into that, beating the Crusaders 31-24. Woos just running riot against the Highlanders 47-13. And the Western Force beating the Waratahs 27 points to 7. Mm. I, lo- I, I love the fact that the Pacifica game was actually closer than, than we all yeah, predicted. I've That's thought- kind of what we want to see. We want to see weaker teams. Like, we expect them to get smashed, but the fight that they put up in that game, oh, admirable. Yeah. Now, I know the Hurricanes, they didn't play a full-strength team, like, whatsoever. But no. it's still it's still nice to see a closer game, obviously. Mm-hmm. As you mentioned, Fiji, there's no doubt with them Fiji. playing Fiji. They just don't lose there. But no. what let's let's talk about the, the game of the hour, right? We've, we've got the Brummies versus the Crusaders. I couldn't watch the full game, but I'm a damn sure I, should, I saw that ending. Oh, right? my God. How and it's the it? correct decision. That's the correct decision. the correct decision. But before we proper tell everyone what happened and how it went down, if if you were a Crusaders fan, how fucked off would you be? If I had money on the Crusaders to win this game, you know how angry I'd be. Oh yeah, well that yeah, because you yeah, you, well you it would have been a draw, so I would have anyway lost it. But mm. I mean, yes, I would be fuming. Like it's so stupid. Like yet yeah, they were I, like sometimes you know when you see something stupid and you just want to ask someone why like, what what went through your head right yeah. like I understand that you don't think but it's like you almost thought what can I do that's possibly the most stupid thing I could do on <laughs> earth and that's what that's what I got to with that one no attempt to catch the ball just like blatantly slap the shit out of it yeah and, so uh, putting their I'm, hand up for the volleyball Olympic team. Fine, yeah, I have I have no idea <laughs> what he was thinking there. That was ridiculous. But the yeah, luck of the Brahmis. <laughs> Imagine going for goal, missing the missing it, but kicking into the post, but giving your players enough time to get under the ball for them, for them to actually compete for it, for them to slap the ball away. So you get walk away with seven points. Yeah. Awesome. And then again, that was a bonus point there. try as well, wasn't it? Uh, no, because bonus points in Super Rugby make no sense. Oh, do, if they work with that, you have to score three tries more than the other team, right? You have to be, yeah, but you also have to be so far ahead as well. So if you bring it closer, you're not getting a bonus point. It's so stupid. Just have the four point and the four tries, or if you keep it tight, yeah, it's not hard. Everyone else does that like that. Yeah, I remember for for a while, I'm not too sure if it was for you guys like that as well. It's like if you score three tries more than the other team, you yeah. get the bonus point. I don't think so. You could have had a bonus point. Let's say the score was 21 0 
Mm-hmm. It was three mm-hmm. tries you scored, you got the bonus point, even though it's yeah. not four tries. But if the other team scored a try, your bonus point falls away. Yeah, so you'd always have to try and score. Yeah, so let's yeah. say, for instance, yeah. the the we go back to the URC. If the if the Bulls concede a bunch of tries at the end of the game, they can lose that bonus point. It, it keeps yeah. teams from not just relaxing and taking off all their best players because then you have, have to actually defend your lead. You get what I mean? I know, but it's just weird. I get why why it's like that, it, but it's very hard to explain and very, especially for a Northern Hemisphere point of view that does, if you score four tries, you get a bonus point regardless. Mm. And if you lose within seven, you also get a losing bonus point. Yeah, it's tough for, for some teams, let's say for Moana, that gets smashed like 60, 40, scoring 40 yeah. points, but not getting any points. <laughs> like no bonus point try, not close enough to get a bonus point, nothing. You get zero. Yeah, they'd benefit from Northern Hemisphere because they'd get the still walk away with at least one point. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what the Crusaders were thinking. Yeah. Stupid decision, cost them. Massively, and there's like bottom of the tip, not bottom, second bottom, eleventh. Yeah, ridiculous. <clears throat> it's not looking good. No, 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 they they intend they one point above above Moana, but they're like the closest to the plus points differential. Yeah, Make, minus, 40, minus forty-one. Yeah. What? So there you go. You heard Devin earlier that Melbourne Rebels are in sixth. They're in the playoffs as of right now. On minus 90 on points differential, Crusaders yeah. are sitting 11th, no playoffs, minus 41. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. no words. I don't know. Can I get into some sense. predictions? Yes, yeah, so let's predict week 14 because we have got some tasty games. Well, there's there's never a dull game in Super Rugby. Mm. Starting off, I'm so glad it's on the Friday. I said it to you last week that Friday's my big Super Rugby day. Chiefs. Hosting the Hurricanes. Ooh. Hurricanes are a uh, Crusaders at home. I've got Crusaders to take it. I'll I'll back them at home against Moana. What? Oh sorry, sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Sorry, <laughs> I, I sk- whoa, I skipped I skipped to week fifteen. My oh, bad. Yeah, Okay, Chief, so sorry, that... I, I I went totally blank there. You know when I just said like you have to ask some someone like what are you thinking? Yeah, that. There you go. Chiefs, Hurricanes. Uh, oh, saucy. It's very saucy. Um, very tasty. Mouth-watering. Popcorn worthy. Home ground advantage could be massive. Um, mm. But the Chiefs haven't filled me with... They haven't beaten any team really by 50 lately, have they? Uh, yeah, they beat the Western Force 56-7 and then... Okay. I'll go. I'll go with... It's so tough. I'm gonna go with the Chiefs to get the upset victory if, because I had a Is that upset. Yes, Is with that... the one that the Hurricanes have played, Hurricanes and the Blues have been levels above everyone. I suppose. Um, you know what? Because if you look at team of the season this far, probably the half of the team is Hurricanes. The other half is Blues. So that's, that's a yeah. I'll go for Hurricanes just to make it. It's, it's too close to call. I can like, I can easily yeah. see the Chiefs winning it. But I, yeah, I'll I'll stick with the Hurricanes. Going over to Australia, we know Brumbies... it's going to be an absolute belt of a game. Mm. We can have that streak. Yeah, that's a guarantee. Money back guarantee on that. You could bet on that. You actually win the bet on that one. That'll be a good yeah. game. Brumbies Rebels. Brumbies. That's a weird one because I'm I've got Brumbies written down as well. But I feel like Rebels can run it really tight. They if can they run it. If they want yeah, to. They can. Up. I've mentioned it before. When you talk about Australian derbies, form goes out of the window. Somehow it's always close. Um, but the, the Brumbies are very good against the Australian teams. Like for some reason, they form doesn't go out of the window for them. So Canberra's um, a bit of a fortress as well. Yeah, I'm I'm going Brumbies to to get the job done. Mm, Moana Pacifica versus the Waratahs. I've got Moana to get the win, not by much. I don't think it's going to be the prettiest of games, but no, it's Waratahs. Going to be horrific. Um, yeah, I agree. 
There we go. Moana, Moana will probably do it. Nice. Just because they, just because they are at home. Yeah, fair enough. A classic Crusaders versus the Blues. Or Blues this season. Blues. Yeah, but the Crusaders at home against the good teams this season have pulled somehow up. pulled it close. Yeah. I don't know how they beat the Chiefs comfortably as well. Yeah, Obviously, comfortably. they've lost the easier games. I don't know how. So I think this game is going to be closer than we expect it to be. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, the Blues will still do it pretty comfortably, but it's going to be closer than we think. That's, yeah, no, that's a fair one. Reds versus... Caleb Block's playing some of the best rugby he's played. He's is playing well. definitely in the hunt for that 11 jersey in the famous black this summer. Hoskins to Tutu is knocking at that door. Do you, do you start Hoskins at eight? Do you start Ardy at eight? Do you have one at the six? Who knows? You know, there's... With with Sam Kane gone now, it, it really it opens up a little bit. Yeah. Reds versus the Western Force. I've got the Reds. So it's on Corp. Yeah. 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 Sh- they should do it. Should is the key is the key word there. And but the with the way game... that the four the I know the, the Waratahs haven't been that good, but the, the way that the force played against the Waratahs, mm. I kind of fancy the force a bit. Um, yeah, yeah the Reds, huh? Reds scraped over the line against the Rebels, lost against the draw. I know it was at the draw, scraped over the line against um, the Crusaders. Uh-huh. So, but they, the they played well against the Blues again. So, like, it's so, <laughs> it's so inconsistent. It's wild. Yeah, I, I, I'm going with, with the Reds to do it. Okay. Then you've got. In the greenhouse, as I like to call it, because that's what it looks like. Highlanders versus Fijian Drew. Highlanders. Uh, yeah, because Drew doesn't travel well for some reason. Boy, sort it out. And when you mean travel, one foot off their own pe- home pitch, they, they can't play. Yeah, they don't like really. We're going to stick with predictions, though, because it's massive in the Northern Hemisphere this weekend. Friday night, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Challenge Cup final, Sharks, Versus Gloucester. And before I make my prediction, how pissed would you be as a Benetton fan right now? You are working hard, harder than ever, to stay in the top eight, to seal the playoffs and get your spot in the Champions Cup for next season. But if the Sharks were to win it, they take the last spot. How annoyed would you be, especially now that Benetton have beat the Sharks as well? Yeah, that would that will be a tough pull to swallow. Like, a truly tough pull to swallow. But isn't it if Benetton can somehow get up even higher, don't don't they secure their spot? Yeah, so so basically before the ball's been kicked in the Challenge Cup final, the top eight are in the Champions Cup. But they could but, lose their spot against the Sharks. But if the Sharks were to win, they take whoever finishes eighth, they take they take their but spot. But what, what if Benetton goes on to play a semi final? The mark. So where are they seated? So it's, so it's just where they've ended. So so ten so like hypothetically, Benetton Ben in the middle there, Benetton can finish eighth. Win the URC won't be in the cha- the Champions Cup though. Wow. Because they're seated eighth. I think I could be totally wrong in saying that. I know that Char- wow. if you're in the Challenge Cup, they do take the last spot, but I don't know how. If it can, if it can take, like like you said, if Benetton make a semi final or, but mm. I'm sure based on seeding. So if it is based on seeding, Benetton can win the URC and they'll be in the Challenge Cup next year. Yeah, oh, that doesn't sit right. I don't like that. Just here's an and idea, was, and I'm telling you now, the Sharks are bringing silverware home. I can't believe us. I'm saying it. They'll actually do it. No, you think? Yeah, I they've, keep they've, worked, about... they've worked too hard and got too much scrutiny mm-hmm. to get in, to get themselves kind of out of the mud where they've been. Like obviously they lost this weekend embarrassingly against Cardiff, but th- that's not their team. No, like, no, they've been but preparing not... for this game. They'll see it as their home game. I know it's played in England, which makes it, mm, but 
they'll be up and ready for it. And they've got a lot of winners in their team that knows how to win. This is what annoys me about the Sharks. This infuriates me about the Sharks. I understand player welfare is very important in the modern day and that bigger t- bigger players that are on international duty get more frequent time off than others. I understand that. I understand that's how that works. I understand that's the governing body breathing down the necks of the clubs. That like, look, mm. you can't play even every week because we need them for the box. I understand that. I understand this is a political side of things. You cannot give it all in the Challenge Cup and not give a shit about the URC. You have to find that nice balance. Yeah, it's it's not really that they didn't care about the URC. There's a lot of games that played full-strength teams that just couldn't win games. The, the issue that, that we spoke on Savas and Scripted with is, is John Plumtree. Like, they look like they have no tactics. Decision-making is horrible. Um, just giving players chances after chances after chances after not performing. Why did Misuki just come in at the end of the season, right? So... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and say the Sharks played this full strength team every single game. They should have placed a lot higher with the team that they played in most games. That still lost um, big games. So yeah. yeah. So you got Sharks. So you think Sharks are winning the Challenge Cup? Yeah. And, and this is not biased because I. No, no, you're. Like you're a man. I don't no. like the Sharks. I don't know. Because Gloucester again, we, me, me, you, and Andy spoke about it a few weeks ago. Both mm. teams have done woeful in the league, but have absolutely, obviously, rightfully so in the final. But have carved it up on the European stage. Yeah, it's odd to think about it. But it's kind of also like they they knew they weren't getting anywhere in the league, so then after they knew their chances yeah. were gone, they like completely wrote it off and just mm. focused on the Challenge Cup. Which, okay. as you just mentioned, it's not the best. Um, as long as they at least tried and then saw, okay, they're not really getting anywhere. So yeah, then, yeah, if you've tried, then fair enough, prior, prioritize. But if you were still in the running for both, compete for both. That's what yeah. you want. You should every see that every season, every team should aim for the double, and in South Africa's uh, eyes, aim for the triple because we have the Curry Cup as well. Remember, oh. so. So that's also player welfare because we have to the same amount of games, but we have a tournament extra. Yeah. So they can't so, sit there and play. Gloucester yeah. are actually on for the double. They won the Premiership Cup. Oh, okay. I oh, see. So you guys also have three tournaments. Premiership teams do. Premiership. URC. URC yeah. Well, Northern Hemisphere URC teams don't have there's two tournaments. Yeah. But. Fair Prem Cup's weird because for the most part you play like your academy players, get their first caps, get them on the like first team, play, get them playing first team rugby. Mm. How will you get to about the final? And if you like, like Gloucester, who haven't really done well in the Prem, don't need to save players. So you can have Chris Harris, Adam Hastings, etc. play a Prem Cup final and win it, which they did by beating extra yeah. cheap. Which sucks, but anyway, yeah, it's it's a strange one because the sharks, when they go full wag, when it's on paper, you know what they do, and you know what they're very capable of. Yeah, but that's that's why I'm, that's why I'm, I'm predicting the the sharks to get it over the line. Ugh. I'm gonna say Gloucester just because I don't even know. Just that's because just... you want Bennett in there. I, yeah, I feel like Benetton deserve to be in the Champions Cup and the Sharks don't. I yeah, feel they, like they do. They do. I feel like that's my Benetton main... Benetton has had a better season than probably most other URC teams. Like, I mean, they're sitting in eighth, but I, I personally feel, if you put it on standards, I feel like they, they've had a better season than, like you wouldn't agree, but then Edinburgh and Ulster, for for example. No, just, I, I in terms of stand, just in yeah. terms of standards, what's expected of them, yeah. they've played mm-hmm. above their levels. I'm not saying that means that Edinburgh's had a bad season and don't deserve where they have to be, but Edinburgh's standards is to really push up, right? Like and ours is tricky though because we didn't we didn't make playoffs last season. Yeah, but you play Zebra twice. That's three points. Uh, that's not our fault. 
<laughs> we'll have to play Zebra twice, but would you, know, would you I, rather I, play Zebra or Zebra twice or Bulls twice? We beat Bulls in the hive. So like, we beat the Bulls this season. Did you? Yeah, I was there. Well, then you have to play them at Loftus the weekend. No, after. no, 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 Loftus, not happening. That's different. But I'm going for Gloucester because I don't know. I just feel like they've really went for it, especially in the Challenge Cup. They're on for the double, and I really want to see Benetton get that place. I don't. I feel like that. I would just be a really slap in the face if the Sharks went. To, you know what? If Sharks yeah. win it, they play. Whoever wins are the better team. That's just how it works. But I, yeah, they're sitting so far down the table to then get the Champions Cup spot. It just feels yeah. wrong. Yeah, but let's move on to the big one. The big one, the pinnacle of club rugby, as it's well, deemed. We won't go into it. Into it with too much depth because we will well, bring up another episode as a full well, breakdown. Back. Full breakdown. What? So we'll do even more depth of what we just said. But anyway, Leinster Toulouse, the ten star match. Leinster going for number five. Toulouse going for number six. Ay ay ay. Stacked. Money, head to heads, throughout one to money because they buy all the South Africans. Not really, not these two teams, but I'll I mean, there's so numbers. much money. There's so much money invested into these two teams, okay. like it's actually okay. ridiculous. The, um, back, the Toulouse backline that they have as options is ridiculous. Yeah, and I mean, fair enough. These two teams deserve to be there. Like, I talk a lot of shit when it comes to these teams, but it's only because they are the two best teams. Yeah. They are both extraordinary. Um, mm-hmm. I would love to lose for to lose to win this game, just because of the the current heated rivalry between South Africa and Ireland. So it's just like fuels us a bit more. Okay, gives us, gives us a couple of bullets in the gun to shoot. Um, but wow, I I'm telling you now, game of the season. Oh yeah, I'm like this I'm will be heated, and it's at Twickenham, right? No, London. Tot- uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, oh, same as Challenge Cup. Oh, my football team, Tottenham. Oh, it's the oh. It's, it's the first it's the first trophy that will be won at Tottenham Stadium. Oh, it's a rugby trophy. I've actually lost so much respect for you in that sentence. Well, are you Arsenal fan? No, I'm a blue. I'm a Chelsea. Oh my word! <laughs> You're dating our sloppy seconds, O Pochettino. It worked though. It was working with us. Ain't working yeah, with you. Ain't working I mean, with you're sitting seventh, sixth, no, or whatever. No, we finished sixth. <laughs> oh, fair fair anyway, that's the wrong sport. I've got to lose to win the game. Ah, uh, yes, I do as well. I think nothing against Leinster. I don't have any heated beef with them. They are been a fantastic team. They've been very entertaining to watch, but. And this is my only big reason for going for Toulouse. Leinster nearly fucked it against Northampton Saints. We both said, you said it, that if there was five, you and Andy said it. And Andy was at that game. And he's a Leinster man. If there was five more minutes of that game, Saints would have won it. Toulouse, yes, Quinn's got themselves back into the game, but Toulouse didn't panic. Mm. They kept themselves on the straight and narrow, they dug themselves out the shit when needed. They got a crucial try to essentially finish the game off. I just, I just think... feel Leinster uh, to lose. It feels like they concede a lot of points. But... And that's, that's not... They score a lot of points, but don't think you can score that many points against Leinster. Their no. defense is proper solid. Look at the way... I know we just mentioned Saints could have won that game. But you have to give credit to the oh, defence of Leinster as well. They were, hundred um, percent. I don't know. I, I feel like it's going to come down to the kick and tee. I do feel like it's going to be going to come down to use the best nine, Gibson Park and on the band. I mean that that sentence on its own sells this game. Yeah, it would have been better if it was Faf de Clerk, but yeah. Oh, shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. The head to head, the teams haven't been announced yet. Like, like I've said, we're recording on Monday. 
Teams yeah. aren't going to be able to get. But you've got a rough idea. You're going to have Andrew Porter. You're going to Would have. Would you go? Yeah. And don't be biased. Would you go Blakey Horn or Tom Ramos? I I I do like how they've done it this year. I will I would go King Horn. You don't because yeah. you don't. I know Ramos is good off the kick and tee. And that's my son controversial. I think King Horn as an overall game adds more. That's yeah. not the fact I'm buying. Hit in the A. If you look at the likes of, um, I user, hope he, Harry's six foot five. You you go you go Keenan and James Lowe, both good under the eyeball. You need yeah, King, Horn. King Horn yeah. to disrupt that. Is his nose fixed? If his nose isn't fixed, he's not playing. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a mess of a I forgot that happened. In the last touch of the ball the game, he broke his nose. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Um, Let's wrap it up, Murray. Yep. To lose, win it, Gloucester win it. There you go. And we'll be back next week. Discussing in depth about the finals. That's Until then. Man. Not next week. Yes, next, next week. week the finals. Are, oh, yeah. We'll discuss. We'll discuss it the after. Sorry, my bad. Once again, I, I'm feeling like a fool out here at the moment. Oh my God. He's predicting week games weeks early. He's telling me we're not doing the final next week. Yes, we are. Ignore yes. him. Yes, just think. He's, just think he's taking. But we still this week. week will come to you with a full preview. Yes, this. we're doing a full preview and a review. We're spoiling you. There we go. Yeah. All right. Exactly. So. We're on YouTube, Casual Bias Rugby, Rugby Connection Podcast, Spotify, TikTok. Give Casual Bias Rugby a follow on TikTok. Give Buzz for Rugby a follow on TikTok. We're both on Instagram. Devin doesn't really use his, so he doesn't count, but he's there anyway. And next week, finals rugby. Champions will be crowned. We'll discuss it. But until then, see you later.